goodness, it's been a while, guys. A long, long while, right? What was our last video? Uh, mobile Command Center, I believe it was. And I did a couple, like, time lapse. It was cheesy stuff, right? Anyways, uh, today is a very, very special day for me because I got a great friend that's coming back. National Guards, he was cross seas, and you know, as a token of my appreciation and everything, I took it upon myself and had some help from his family and everything. And he was gaming off of a laptop, and I felt bad for him. I mean, it was a nice laptop, a little outdated, and in a little bit of a rough shape. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was, I want to say it was like an Asus laptop or something and anyways uh, he uses his his laptop to game and I'm sorry for the furnace going on in the background it, yeah the, my recording studio is kind of uh, in shingles I got my uh, personal editing machine here that I'm slowly building up it's uh, my dream PC so uh, stay tuned for that uh, Dark Tyranids does not exist anymore. I actually gave that one to another friend who's going to college for engineering, and I said, well, this thing, you know, Dark Tyranids is a serious workhorse for, you know, college student-wise, so I definitely wanted, you know, him to go to college having that. That's a major tool, and I wish I had a really decent computer when I was doing that. But anyways, yeah, back to the story before I got sidetracked. I know, I get sidetracked so often. Anyways, he was gaming off the laptop that was Aces. He uses gaming to, you know, interact with his siblings and his family and everything. They all get on a game and game together, right? And since they live in multiple different towns it's kind of hard to do so the game brings them together well to me you know that to me is very important so when I took this upon myself to do I wanted something that definitely showed you know related to him I wanted to take everything and and pretty much bring it all together and bring him up to speeds and can handle anything he wants to do. Uh, he's about to get married. He's, <laughs> he, the list goes on. Kids, yeah. Family stuff, right? I don't want to get started with that. You all know the story on that one. Anyways, so what I did was I started off by thinking of something I wanted something unique right I'm tired of the square cases like we have here you know this is actually his old case and I didn't know he had one until I started working on this and I was buying component one piece at a time after a time and so I was the first thing was the case I said you know definitely need to find a decent case to do this because to me a case your style it's your it, your you know to be unique you to stand out you know make it your own and I when I saw this thing online I was like oh my god yes that would be amazing well they have this size and they have a, a different size and this is a thermal take uh, AHT 200 it does have tempered glass panels. Uh, it says five of them. I don't. Let's see. We got what? One, two, three. Oh yeah. So we have three in the front and the two on the sides. I will pop the sides off here in a little bit, and we'll go into detail on this. But anyways, he was using a Crosshair Hero VI, which is. Still an older motherboard than what Dark Tyranids was because that one was a Cross Hero VII Wi-Fi Edition one, and I actually have another board that I 
got so might be able to make a dark iron edge version 2 um, and we also have another computer to review it that was my pure all white build and I, it's probably the best build I've done yet to be honest I'm trying to make this one the best build but wire management is hard I've been having issues with the 8 terabyte hard disk drive I have because I wanted a redundant backup system in case yeah, you know I had some error go wrong and plus more storage is always best so anyways I can't get it to register in Windows 10 I can't get and we're running Windows 11 on this and I can't get it to register on Windows 11 so I can format it and I'm gone through and multiple YouTube videos so if you guys have any, any suggestions or advice uh, for me to try let me know and we'll capture it on me trying it out and everything but anyways uh I'm gonna give him my two Dell monitors for this so he can have two screens this graphics card I'm pretty sure can handle it I do see that it has a display port and an HBI port those monitors have both have those type of ports on it. But anyways, uh, case-wise, I don't know what kind of case this is, to be honest. It definitely was in horrible shape because it used to have a glass panel. Obviously, it was busted and there was plexiglass and it was, uh, I think, epoxied on or something like that. Not epoxy, uh... Well, the JB Weld or something like that, you know, you're too part of the yeah, epoxy. So, anyways, I had to break that, which I was trying to be gentle, so I can get in here. And we pretty much just took the components off the motherboard, put it on here. There was a direct swap, which was nice. Uh, so we went from a full ATX motherboard to I don't remember what size this is. Anyways, the motherboard that's in this computer here is a Asus Tough Gaming B550M Plus Wi-Fi. Uh, it's got the Ryzen chip, uh, DTS Custom, it supports the headphones and controller for gaming. It has the HDMI actually on here and a display port, so if we did get it on board, graphics on a CPU then he could actually just not need a graphics card but since he already had one that helped me out quite a bit uh, he does have a Samsung solid state drive SSD um, this board does support an M.2 but we did not put one in uh, with uh, the computer off you do get a little uh, color flickering you kind of see it up here in the front area but oh well oh yeah and he also has a uh, a spinning drive I don't remember what size that is I think it's a terabyte and that's what his win I don't I think that's where all his storage is for his games and his operating systems on the SSD very smart move by the way because SSDs are a lot faster than your your uh, spinning disk drives right or hard disk drives um, trying to think what else do we have on here he had two fans they light up red I installed them right up here and that's all he had for this case was two fans so he had one that was an intake and he had, was that right? Yeah, one was an intake and he had one in the, the back for an exhaust and I was just like, oh gosh, <laughs> painful, painful. Anyways, uh, actually I can boot this up for you guys and show you. So, it's a little noisy, but it quiets it down quite a bit. Obviously, uh, any upgrades I would do, I'd probably switch out this uh, CPU cooler here and go with a liquid cooled one. You would not quite the hell way down. Um, 
what else do I talk about in this case? Oh, I went ahead and did a, uh, what do you want to call that? It's like a big decal you do on cars. Anyways, I, I found like a big roll of that, right? And I went with camouflage. So I did a white, dark gray, light gray camouflage on the uh, tray that the motherboard mounts to. And I wrapped his hard drive in that. Um, yeah, you can see it down here on the power supply even. So I got that all thrown out in here. We threw on the American flag on this side, this side back here and in the front. Um, the reason I picked this was because, you know, with him being in the Army Reserves, uh, he's, I believe he's a mechanic. Yeah, he's a mechanic. And uh, I wanted something that kind of related something to the military. So when I saw this, I was thinking, oh, this looks like, a, you know, Apache fighter jet, you know. Actually, I can turn this around and show you guys real quick. I don't have no table set up. I'm having to do this off of the, my original one. But yeah, as you guys can see, I have just regular fans up here in the front. Uh, the, they really wouldn't show through here. I mean, yeah, you might get some light bleed through, but there you go. As you can see, CPU fan is actually quiet down. It don't get no sound like bearings going out type deal. I do like this cooler on here because it does change colors, but yeah, um, <laughs> this is as far as I gotten was to get it up and going. I did see that it posted and went all the way past post, went into Windows, sign in, but I don't know his password, so I did not sign into his account to uh, get into Windows any further to run updates and make sure the BIOS is up to date and all that. But if it, you know, got to Windows, to me that was, that's excellent. Um, let me go ahead and take the panel off on this and we will, I'll show you guys a couple other things on here that really, I really do like these big guys. I mean, look how big that thing is. It's amazing. <laughs> that's the biggest, screw thing I've ever seen. Anyways, uh, there's the box. Um, I, with the way market has been with prices on literally anything that's computer related, mostly graphics card. That was my biggest thing. So when he had one, I was just like, oh, thank God, this solved so many issues. And then this guy showed up and I was like, wow, that was like a Hail Mary. It's great. All right. Anyways, um, here I go again, rambling again, but we'll turn this around. So the door does open. It opens up pretty far. Uh, let's see if I can get any further in. There we go. So this part here is the actual hard drive, the uh, hard disk drive, the old school drive, right? I did not do any lighting effects in here. This is all just rainbow puke thing going on. Um, he has, what is this? Uh, a plus gold. I believe this is a, uh, it's a EVGA hard drive and have the fan on top spinning so obviously this isn't pushing enough energy to get it to spin uh, the door on the back side does open and swing too and you can actually take the whole door off but this is what really made it hard back here because there is no exhaust fan you can do on the back side literally there is nothing <laughs> this is all you get right uh, the shroud I ended up having to do double-sided tape to hold it on. I know it's janky. It's not the right way of doing it, but when you're working with a case like this and you, I should have gone with the motherboard that had the, the back panel piece already built into it, you know, as a one, this one, uh, 
yeah, I messed up on that one. So uh, wire management, I had to get a little more creative because you know, this is a clear backside. So yeah, okay, you guys want me to be brave. All right, <laughs> I'll be brave and show you guys. So we will do this one. I'll have to do another 180 degree turn. Get my wires out of the way. Uh, how do I go about this? Maybe we'll spin it the other way around. Okay. This is the problem with my setup, but that's all right. Show it off again for you guys. <laughs> There's the panel. I did leave the tempered glass sticker on. I didn't know if you wanted that on or not. These guys, like I said, are nice and solid. The uh, backside one, that's right here. This one was on the other side was hard to actually get to uh, screw in. I don't know if the uh, if the metal bends or if it's just a bad tap uh, or what's going on but it was hard to put these screws on and yes you can actually tear this whole computer part piece by piece to literally uh, almost like a, a skeleton design like because this whole top piece comes off which then this comes off the whole back tray came off which made it easy for actually wrapping it so that was really cool. Um, just some fun things I thought I would share. I know you guys are probably cringing in your seats right now as you watch this. Like, oh God, this guy's really dedicated to showing us his uh, wire management. That's brave of him, but oh God, the computer is just rotating. All right, anyways, so there we go. As you guys can see, that is as clean as I can get with my cable management. Obviously with being, you know, a helicopter, I was kind of trying to use the cords as kind of a, to sell the theme, but not very easy to do. Uh, it does have two Corsair fans. They do not light up like I mentioned before. Um, no RGB, no none of that. They were my spare ones from Dark Tyranids. AIO, I mean the CPU all in one pump, you know, cooler. Uh, so I went and put actual light up fans and a little more powerful ones as far as I go. But I like how this door swings. It's very quiet, it's very smooth. Up on top, it's a blue power button up here. I have a type C, I have two USB 3.0s, I have a mic input, headphones, a hard drive, and a reset button. That one, yeah, don't have that. Very frustrating. Um, let's see, what else? The wrapping was actually kind of hard to do with the texture when it came to the, the panel because, you know, as you can see, it's not smooth. It's not a piano finish. Piano finish would have been perfect for getting decals and uh, the wrap, the, you know, the stick to it, but it is doable. What I ended up doing is cutting a piece big enough to cover the whole area, peeled off the backing um, across the corner. And I, as I pulled back the, the backing, I pressed it down to get it to adhere just enough to stick. Once I got that all done, then I went back with a heat gun and just a little bit of heat at a, probably say about distance, about that far right from it, just to heat it up enough to activate the glue. And according to the wrapping on it, that is exactly what I needed to do. In fact, I got the wrapping over here. So let me go ahead and grab that show you so this is the wrapping I did I think I did something similar in my, 
Mine's more of a, a digital camouflage in this one. Uh, but anyways, it says you heat it up to activate the... And this wrap I bought off Amazon. It's the Vivid Plus Premium Series. So it's commercial graphics. Um, you can go to their website, www vvivid vinyl v i n y l right dot com and but yeah this is their premium series um kind of wish this wasn't i don't know this i would look i like stuff that has detail right i love my detail when it comes to to anything really <laughs> Puzzles, yes, detail. I do models, detail. Um, literally everything. It's even in my work, right? <laughs> well, uh, work, working, yeah, I gotta have detail. <laughs> ooh, ooh, don't wanna knock that over. Those are my panels to this guy. Like I said, I'm still working on it. Still trying to figure out if I should put a, an optical drive in here, but that's for other reasons, but that's, that's fine because I, I was thinking about when I'm not using this for work because I'm trying to make this an all-in-one, but this video ain't about that. It's about this guy. So anyways, um, yeah, uh, the graphics card is a... Oh yeah, and this thing was definitely really dusty, so I had to take each part out and clean it. Actually, I don't know what the graphics card is because the thing's spinning like crazy. And I don't see anything, but yeah, like power size, EVGA, oh yeah. And the Samsung is back here, right here, behind the cover. It's kind of hard to see with it being black and everything is black. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What else have we got? Oh yeah. So I've seen other people modding this case. One that actually made these like missile ports right here. These do pop off. They're just um, snap-in pieces. There's no screws, no hardware to hold them in. So you gotta be very careful when you're popping them on and off because if you're not careful you could break that um but yeah it is pretty thick metal all the way around it does have rubber feet at the bottom which is very nice uh power supply have slides in from the back and you got screws that hold it down so you mount it that way which is odd concern it's you know right there <laughs> right underneath the graphics card um, what else we got? The fans on top are also Corsair. They are the 12 volt DC, 0.38 amps, brushless fans. Um, that's the model, that is a long model name. Verified. Yep. So A one two two five M one two S Corsairs and brushless fans. So they're clear housing. They got LEDs in all four corners. Um, your typical fan, pretty much. And the reason I don't really like them. Even though they're a static color, they cannot change colors because they're just one color. Is eventually the red kind of dulls out and looks almost pink, but you gotta be up close and personal looking at it. That's why I kind of try to hide it behind the shroud here. And you can only see it from certain areas, but the main thing you see is this guy that's spinning which is your CPU cooler so what else do we have so yeah we reused his power supply reused 
his graphics card, his CPU, I don't remember what CPU is. Um, let's look at the booklet. The booklet might tell me what kind of CPU we can use in this. Mm. 1-8. And by the way, I'm looking at the Hey Dude, How You Do That book. So it's an AMD socket AM4 designed for 3rd gen <coughs> AMD Ryzen and 3rd gen AMD Ryzen with Radeon graphics processor. So I want to say it's a it's definitely a Ryzen. I know. Well, yeah, obviously a third generation Ryzen. Probably the five or the seven. Uh, that's my guess. Probably the five. I don't remember it being a really high end chip in it. Um, so that could be uh, something that I would probably upgrade if he wants to get into more taxing type games. Um, the RAM. What RAM did we have? We didn't even touch on that. Uh, yes. Two sticks of Corsair, they're both eight gigabytes. They're the just your plain uh, RAM sticks with the black heat sink on top. So they blend in nicely. So obviously I guess with this build it was mostly all black that I was doing. Um, for the back side connections we have two regular USBs. We have a BIOS flashback, which I just put this USB dongle in the wrong spot. And then we have the BIOS in. Where's that? Um, oh, yeah, they're up here. So, yeah, he has two USB 3 ones on top, and then he has three on the back he can use that are USB 3 ones. BIOS looks like it's a 3.0. He has a BIOS flashback button, obviously, if you have a BIOS point. Uh, the Wi Fi 6 connections are back here. He has a HDMI, display port, a Type C connection. Yep, so he has one on top and one on bottom. Uh, oh, yeah, that brings me to the next thing. I'll, so I will talk about that here in a little bit. Um, not sure what this USB type is. I don't think it says in here what this is. Six. Mm. Oh, he has a PS2 keyboard, mouse, combo port. This shocks me they're still putting that on motherboards. Really? You know, uh, the, I thought we were past that. But okay. Anyways. Uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1 up to 5 gigabytes port. So th these 9 pin universal serial bus ports connect to USB 3.2 Gen 1 devices. Uh, where's the third one? Where's it? Oh, yeah, okay. About 2.5 gigabytes. Yeah, 2.5 gig Ethernet port. This port allows 2.5 gigabytes per second Ethernet connection to a local area network through a network hub. Okay. I'm just gonna go into the whole uh, LED status and speeds and all that. But then you have a USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is up to 10 gigabytes. So the Gen 1 is 5 gigabytes, Gen 2 is 10 gigabytes. Okay, so that's the teal blue. So that was the what I was trying to figure out. That is Gen 2. All right, so he has a USB Gen 2 port. That's nice. Um, I don't know why they did teal. I mean, I understand you have to separate colors, so you know. Uh -huh. Here's this, and then yeah, we get into the whole 
audio stuff. I don't know why you're calling me. <laughs> um, he has a center subwoofer port, which is orange, a line-in port, which is like blue. So that would be like your tape, CD, DVD player, other audio sources. Obviously we know subwoofer, right? Line-in port, which is a light blue. Yeah, I just said that, okay, USB 2.0 port. Where's that at? I... Oh, so that's what the blacks are, okay. 2.0. Then we get to 3.2 Gen 1, 3.2 Gen 2, okay. And then BIOS, flashback, Intel, Wi-Fi. It is an Intel one. Okay, that's what their Wi-Fi 6 is, it's an Intel. Kind of figured it was. Mm hmm. Ensure that the ACES 2 2 dual band Wi Fi moving antenna is securely installed to the Wi Fi ports. Yes, because I've actually seen people on YouTube break these, so please be gentle with those things because, uh, yeah, you bend that pin and you break it. Oh, it's game over. Then you're just gonna have to do a uh, dongle type deal, and yeah, that's that's gonna suck. But okay, still can get away. HDMI port does it say anything? It's for a high definition multimedia interface connector, and it is HDCP compliant, allowing playback of high def DVD. Not ultra high def, just high def. Okay, guys. <laughs> Blu-ray and other protected content. Didn't know that. That's interesting. Because usually, you know, that that's what's stopping people from actually just ripping DVDs and making multiple copies is because they're all, yeah, have security stuff on them. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Yep, let's see. And then the USB 3.2 Gen 2 up to 10 gigabytes port USB Type C. Uh, okay. I would say Type C is for Type C port, which is for Type C devices. I don't know why they are redundant with this. An optical. S PDIF out port. Now, those I've noticed are sometimes on some motherboards and not always on motherboards. Um, I guess your low end ones don't really have them, they just have your regular connection, you know, headphone jack type deals. But when you get into your optical ones, they seem to be on the mid to high end motherboards. So, interesting. I still use mine for my theater room, which I also need to do a YouTube video on. I mention this stuff because when I watch my videos, <laughs> it reminds me, oh yeah. And you get off my button to stuff. Microphone port pink. Yeah, so they, it seems like they're always the same colors too, so I don't, I'm not sure why I'm reading this out anymore. And then the line one is obviously your line out port, which is for headphones, speakers, Four channel to 5.1 channel and 7.1 channel configurations. Function is of this port becomes front speaker out. Okay. Yeah. There is four slots for his RAM, so he can obviously add two more and get to a 32 gigabyte. BIOS settings, all that. You could do RAID configuration. He's got three spots back here for uh, SSDs. Like I said, the board has a spot for M.2, so he could do that as well. Um, I think that's really all there is. I had to get creative with the hard drive because that's what it was. So, uh, I'm getting tired of looking at this thing, by the way. 
It's just one ugly of a case. Uh, so we'll set that there. So yeah, panels. This is what the front of the case looked like. As you guys can see, it was just horrible. Oh, here it is. It's a Corsair case. Okay. So, I mean, it's not that bad of a case because Corsair does make some good products. It does have a lint screen on there. Don't, yeah, there's no way to actually pull it off to clean it. It is just made in there. So, honeycomb in the front and a wire screen in the back and you can't pop it off to clean it. That's, that just sucks. Um, so yeah, we'll show you the old case. Maybe you guys might know it and you guys could probably drop a comment in the bottom of what the case is because I have not been able to find this case anywhere. But uh, I still have the motherboard in here. Uh, so that's what the top looks like oh, as everything comes out. <laughs> I didn't even clean it. I just said screw this. Uh, that's what the back looks like. This back, obviously this had a glass panel. The front had a glass panel. Yeah, yeah, it's a crosshair, VI Hero. It's not the Wi-Fi version. Um, look, there's still the double-sided tape on this thing. That's, that's hilarious. You can see how bad this is. So I don't know if he wants this back. Uh, obviously I'm keeping names out because I don't want to bother people with that and don't want to throw his information out there like that that's just not nice okay so i don't want to get that out of here i don't like that thing anymore don't like it so we talked about this this was a amazon uh refurbished board And it is a uh, AMD Ryzen 5000S X. <laughs> it's desktop ready. It does have the Asus Aura Sync on it. So if he downloads the Aura software from Asus, he can obviously control more of the lighting on the board. It probably could even control the CPU cooler lighting on it since that is a AMD cooler. Um, and when they sent it, it was not packaged that well, so, uh, they still come with the, the, is this, yeah, DVD ROM drive, right? Yeah, this DVD runs automatically, okay. I still prefer to go onto the website and download it from the internet. Um... There's the, the set off and little tiny screw for the M.2 and a little rubber pad. So I made sure I got those back in here for him. Um, I'm not sure if he has monitors back at his place, but I figured, hey, you know, I'll bring it with me to the barbecue and give it to him if he wants it. Uh, yeah, or sink. So the lighting is coming from the bottom right corner so that'd be like the south bridge area um, yep. m.2 heatsink gaming network solution with the uh, turbo LAN. um all kinds of little fancy stuff on here so chipset obviously we said was the b550 chipset memory uh, max is 128 gigabytes, DDR4, 4800 overclock, 4600 overclock, 4466 overclock, 4400 overclock, 4266, I don't remember the, the RAM on this. In fact, I don't even think I even took a look at it. I just said, okay, no, I, that's right, I did. I wanted to make sure that it was on here, and it is, so. Actually, I had to go on there. So this is the Corsair Vengeance. Okay, DDR4. 
think the sticker's on the other side. I'm not gonna try to bother myself looking with that. Uh, graphics, we already went through that. Ethernet, we went through, right? Yeah, storage, total supports two M.2 slots and four SATA six gigabyte a second port. Okay, M.2 one slot key. M is a type 2242-2260 or a 2280. Supports PCIe 4.0 or 3.0 times 4 and SATA modes. Okay. And then the M.2 2 slot key is also an M. Supports the same except it has a 22110 and that one only supports PCIe 3.0 and that's a times 4 in SATA mode okay 4 SATA 6 gigabytes a second ports with RAID 0, RAID 1, and RAID 10 support um, I'm sure you guys can find information on what RAID is and then uh, expansion slots. Yes, we did not speak about that. Obviously, it has one for the <laughs> PCIe, one for the graphics card. That one's plugged into a 4.0 uh, X16. And then there is a 3.0 and 3.01 slots. two asterisks oh okay which is a PCIe x16 two will run times two mode when PCIe x1 is used so I don't know is that saying you can put two graphics card combine them and run it that way and I don't know I never really got into anything with multiple <laughs> graphics cards. I've always had just one. And this one I have a Radian as well. It's a tiny little one. Um, what else do we talk about here? We talk about audio, wireless. Uh, oh yeah, this does have built-in Bluetooth. So. That's nice. I, I remember when my first computer build, you actually bought the little Bluetooth dongle, and that's how you actually got it to do Bluetooth, and it was just hilarious back then. And I was actually talking with a coworker at work, right? Because he has a computer that kind of falls between my first computer and right before Ryzen actually launched, right? give you an idea <laughs> Ryzen series one yeah anyways his computer was just totally layered in dust right and he's like oh it's been sitting for years and years and years I don't even know if it will work anymore and he's like you know it, it was making all kinds of weird noises uh, I think it's just getting hot because it'll run for only so long and then, you know, it'll just shut off. As you guys can see, this is not shutting off, so I did one hell of a job with that. Plus, being open case, yeah. But that's also where it comes hard to <laughs> get airflow, right? Because with an open case, it's, yeah, directing airflow is not easy. So that's one reason why I liked actually doing the CPU cooler on this because the fans blowing right onto the heat sinks, but that's also making its way to the board itself to cool the parts. So that was one issue I had with dark tire nits is that I went with the liquid cooler and my board actually had some hot spots on it, and yeah, that it does uh, happen. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, we pretty much talked about everything on this one. Uh, this one had the Type-C port on top, right? So I was like, okay. Uh, what else was there up here? Oh uh, yeah, because the USBs 
and all that. So anyways, trying to get them plugged in. I ended up having to buy an adapter to take it and actually get it to plug into one of the spare USB plugs on the motherboard. So it is functional, it's just, yeah. Actually, we can probably test that out just so I can show you guys. So these guys are my, uh, this right here is my new headphones I got. It's a uh, Asus headphones. Uh, I don't know what make and model they are. They were just something that was uh, floating around and I said, okay, well, <laughs> here comes the shove and voila, see? So obviously uh, the adapter actually worked. I was kind of skeptical on it and it was cheap and I was like, usually, you know, you get what you pay for. So I got lucky on that one. And then we'll plug it to the back side just to make sure, boom, see? So obviously I got working USB-C on that. That was a tricky thing because I've never ran into that issue. So that was definitely a new thing. Um, I liked his power supply so much that I actually went and bought me a EVGA one to put in here. The uh, goal with this one was to try to get as many different components as I could in here, right? Different brands is pretty much what I'm saying it is. So I got Asus, I got Lee and Lee, I got EVGA, I got, oh, what is that, Ole? Oh, L-A-Y, I believe it is how you say it. For the RAM, um, we got AMD graphics card. It's not a, any brand particular. I think it's just a generic card. Um, went with a Thermalrite M.2 cover on this one. Uh, the motherboard and the monitor back here are actually uh, collector pieces so that is what inspired me on that build there like I said going with a more of a helicopter build is what I wanted to do on this one you guys can leave your comments down below what you think you would do different um, or if you guys built in this case I, I'm just curious to just read your guys comments and see what you guys think I mean been a while since I've done a computer build and, and yeah uh, trying to put them out in videos in the order too as they come out so you guys just let me know what you think what you would do different if you like the case if you don't like the case if you prefer the bigger case one that's like this or the smaller case one Ooh, yeah you can feel the air flow and that thing's nice okay <laughs> distracted um what your guys' suggestions are when it comes to wire management in the case that has a glass back panel. Um, have you guys ever done the wrapping your components? I saw it on a, a Linus Tech Tips. They actually used stickers on theirs, which was interesting. One of his, uh, one of his co-workers, I believe it was, yeah, sticker bombed his whole computer. Not really into the whole graffiti sticker thing and then sticker bombing um, I saw that they had a wrap that was like that and I was just like no not really you know I kind of wanted this because you know military <laughs> army reserves Apache helicopter looking case with the flags um, looks like a turbine spinning <laughs> Uh, the black for stealth you know. um, and then when I went with mine because it is a, a Zaku 2 board yeah, that I believe Asus made this one yeah Asus made it and with that one you know it's a mobile suit and I was like, okay, well, I don't really know much, so I ended up having to watch a bunch of the shows and ideas and getting inspired with it, direction, vision, 
And it actually ended up with me actually having to build this guy here to get an idea of what exactly Azaku 2 is, right? And I'm like, holy crap, this thing is intense. You guys ever built one of these? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't, you're in for a treat. I'll tell you, that is, that is some next level shit right there. <laughs> Keep my language down, so don't worry. Um, since we we're here talking about hard drives, I'll pull this one out. What I'm having issues with, I'm in the middle of actually talking to Western Digital on this, so this is their Western Digital Black, uh, which is odd because online, they make this look like this whole piece is black with uh, some type of design or something, right? but very minimalistic, right? And this is Russian Digital Black, you know, with their logo all over, but this is what you get. <laughs> um, when I pulled it up online, and it does say here, Western Digital Black Gaming Hard Drive. So I was like, okay, maybe it's formatted in a format that's for PlayStation or Xbox. Obviously, those, I'm sure, would have different formats, too, because they're two different companies. Um, yeah. Anyways, I, I plug it in, right? Power and, you know, your data cable. I, I can... It's very quiet, very, very quiet, but I can feel it, you know, spinning up. I can hear a little bit of it, and, I mean, I have to get up close. So I know this thing's spinning. I don't know if they didn't put the arm in there or what, but yeah. Um, I don't have any bending or anything. Like I said, brand new drive. Brand new. No, no idea. Never ran into this issue. So I don't know if it's a dead drive or what, but kind of sucks. It's about a hundred and I'm gonna pay hundred and fifty dollars for that for an eight terabyte drive. I should have gone with a 10 terabyte or 12 or something like that, but yeah. Oh well, <laughs> I'll figure it out. Um, all I really need to do is send in the serial number and proof of purchase, and then I should be able to get her refund return. But I don't want that, I really want the drive, you know. <laughs> So I'm gonna see if they could send me a replacement. But that's the first time I've ever had an issue with a name brand anything, really. Well, I'll take that back. Ace's motherboards have given me nightmares. <laughs> like the uh, Dark Tyranids. Oh, God. <laughs> that gave me so much headache, I couldn't believe it. Oh, and sitting in my new chair. So there's a DOX ACEF chair. It's got back support, arms move. Well, I can, I'm gonna do a review on all of this. So I'll do like a one for the computer and then I'll do uh, my, my recording studio video, right? Um, oh. The other thing I was wondering about on this was if I was to do liquid cooling, I don't know if that would be possible really. I mean, they speak about it in the manual of how I can do it and everything, but I didn't really see an actual spot to mount the pump. I did not see, well, I could do the radiator, that'd be easy. Piping would be easy. I got plenty of width on this guy <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> uh, I can show you guys the box that the case came in uh, it's gonna be what I use to send back to him so that'll be nice motherboard box I don't know if you want it or not but you know, it's just one of those things. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> might as well send it back with him if he can do whatever he wants. So uh, there's the box, anyways, or what it, you know, it looks like. 
same on both sides. Um, I actually bought this off of the Amazon, not Amazon, I'm an Amazon freak, sorry. Walmart website, right? I decided to give them a try, right? So they, I guess they're trying to compete with Amazon. Shame on them. I think that's uh, gonna be a hard thing for them to do. But that's, was the only place I could find at the cheapest price. Uh, yeah. Liquid cooling supported. So it, it says it is normal ticks. Saying it is liquid support. Oh, all right, there is all the information I needed. So case type is a micro case. Dimensions and height, width, and depth is. I'll give you meters first, and then I'll give you inches for. Since just to be nice, so uh, so height is 444.2, width is 282, and diameter is 551.5 meters. Uh, for us crazy Americans, right, because we uh, feel like we have to be different in every way, right? It's uh, 17.5 inches in height, right? 11.1 uh, in width and 21.7 inches in depth, so. Yeah, that's, a, it's a decent sized case. It's definitely heavy. Material says SPCC. I don't know what that is. It said some type of metal. <laughs> uh, dry bays, accessible and hidden. Yes. Expansion slots, there's five of them on here. Uh, I'm guessing, th yeah, because it says the three back here, right? So you got your SSD spots back here. There's three of them. They're on little sleds. You got your little screw caps. Um, they just slide in, screw caps hold them in place. Uh, the other ones are actually supposed to hide up in this, but I took them off and I looked and I couldn't figure out how the hell you mount them in there. I've looked at four videos and no one's doing it, so I don't know if thermal take is just blocked on that one or if that is just with the bigger case, I don't know. Anyways, couldn't figure it out, so I didn't have to really. I kind of just <laughs> did the hard drive, mounted there, and I, that was actually quite tricky, but I got it to do it, and no, I did not use double-sided tape to hold the hard disk drive. That is actually screwed in place and held, and so that was actually pretty neat. So the screws that go through that hold the fan in, I took two of them out and used longer screws just long enough to go past the fan, through the material, and into the hard drive. And that's how I got it to mount like that. It's not hurting the hard drive to sit like that. Um, got those sitting in server racks that way. Uh, I've seen them that way. Um, where else? Uh, dark tire nits have them like that. In fact, I found that they actually work better that way. Drive life, well, everything. Yeah. Well, anyways, I'll, let's get off of that. The motherboard, uh, 6.7 inch by 6.7 inches mini ITX. 9.6 by 9.6 micro ATX. Okay, and those are both is by the way not millimeters IO port is one type C two USB three pawns and one HD audio which is obviously your stuff there fan supports front you can put two 120 millimeter or one 120 millimeter so I did the two 120s since I had those spare and then on the top you can do two 120 or one 120, or you can do two 140, or one 140, right? Obviously, if you got two, you're gonna put two, so. 
You can do 120s or 140s top bottom. I don't know why they were redundant on that. I would just said front slash top and then, you know, put 240 where. Radiator support, that's where I would, you know, draw the line down. So the front, you're gonna get a 240 millimeter or one 120 millimeter. And then one 280 millimeter or one 140 millimeter. It's confusing, I don't know, but whatever. Clearance for the CPU cooler max height is 150 millimeters. So it's going that way. Uh, VGA max length, so your graphics card will maximum length that you can go is 320 millimeters. And then the power supply unit max length is 180 millimeters. So you can see you can fit a pretty decent size graphics card in there and a pretty decent size power supply in there. Um, goodness everything worked out the way it did and I didn't have that issue so I'm kind of thankful on that part of it but uh, this is a uh, was copyrighted for 2020 by thermal take so we're 2022 so this case is already two years old obviously I am not on the wagon of the newest greatest stuff because I I don't have the cash flow for that <laughs> um, where were some other hard parts? Talked about the screw, talked about hard drive mounting because it obviously doesn't fit on the front. We talked about type C and talk about having to get an adapter so that would fit. Um, Clearly everything did boot up. I had to get into the BIOS so I can tell it what it needs to boot from. That was kind of hard because I didn't know if it was going from the SSD or the hard drive. And I was like, well, 50-50 chance. So I, I said SSD and it ended up being SSD. So that was <laughs> very, very lucky there. Um, what else? What else? I really don't know if these are tinted or if they're just smoked or what, but they are, do have a little light gray to them. Yeah, I can't even feel anything on them. I obviously have to clean the glass because this glass is a little filthy. If it's been sitting for a little bit because I've been waiting for them to come back and I've been slowly doing this as a test bench run and making sure everything is going to work properly before obviously doing my video because I don't want to be embarrassed either. Um, motherboard wise, I kind of like the motherboard. It was, it was quite nice. I never really messed with a pretty small motherboard. Uh, it's about the same, yeah, it's the same size as the one that's in here, which is awkward. I know you're all looking at this case and you're like, that's a huge case for a small freaking board. Yeah. Yes, it is. But uh, I got plans for it. if they will work. I don't know, but I have plenty of space to do it in. So just got to figure that one out. Um... The, the case, by the way, you're looking at, you're probably wondering what that is. It's an a Eclipse 500A by Fantex. Uh, so yeah, like I said, trying to throw as many brands into one instead of my usual, you know, Corsair fanboy or my Asus fanboy thing. I'm trying to break away from that. Uh, obviously, thermal take now. I got <laughs> the uh, Fantex case here. In that case, I can go on for a good hour talking about because it's similar in this way, but other ways, very, very different. And build-wise, it's, it's, it's a beast. 
Kind of reminds me of the, this black one with the little lip hangover type deal for an air intake on the top, but yeah, we're, we won't get into that. Um, so if I was going to rate this computer a 1 out of 10, actually, I should back up and do tar Tyranids. Uh, after I took it out of the open case and put it into... It was a Corsair case. I don't remember what brand that case was. Damn it. Anyways, uh, uh, finished product, I would probably give it uh, a strong 7, week 8. So we'll go about 7.5 on it. Just because I cannot get the cables really to sit the way I wanted to in it. Uh, in the open case thing, it was perfect. When I went to a closed case because I was moving and everything and I was afraid of glass breaking and all that. And actually the computer ran better with it being open, um, which makes sense because you know, a closed case, all that heat's in there and you are relying on the fans to push it, which means I actually had to go and buy more fans push the air through that Corsair case. I think it was a Corsair crystal case. Good case though, I mean, plenty of space for fans. I do three on top, three in the front. Uh, actually could do two in the back, so maybe it wasn't a, a crystal case. Um, this one, I probably would rate it tough one I'd probably say a seven it was kind of hard to build in um, once again the the cable oil management there is a little bit of an area for runs for the cable but you've got a glass panel here so no matter how good you run your cables down and yes I use zip ties I um, zip tied them even to the cage and this case actually has a really nice area where you can zip tie these cords down and get really clean runs but uh yeah <laughs> where do you store the slack right because you can't push them under in front of the power supply because that means they will pop out right here and that that's a no bueno right so that's what i was saying it was really really tricky so I ended up having to double back it on itself back here and try to hide it behind this here on the other side. And I think I did a pretty decent job, but I'm a little hard on myself when it comes to this stuff. Um, I should, probably should go up to an eight because it was nice that this all broke down like literally I could take screws out and literally disassemble this to <laughs> literally uh, almost nothing really like I said that whole back tray piece came out that the motherboard mounts to all these sleds come out uh, both glass panels come off the fake vents in front come off, the whole top piece comes off. So as you can see, you get quite a bit of building room in this thing. It's crazy how much this case breaks down. I've never had a case that I could break down so much and then when you build it all back together, it's uh, kind of the best between both worlds. You know, it's a closed case, but it's also an open case design. <laughs> Close because well, if it was off open case, obviously, you know, all your components are right there. Um, it's two dimensional and it's just not really that good looking. So, yeah, this one, uh, uh, right now, as it sits, is an eight. Uh, if I can get the cabling done and figure out where I'm doing about storage on that. That could be a good contender with maybe a 9 or a 10, but 
the all white build that I have that I need to do a video on. That's a, that's a 10 all day, every day. The cable management was nice. Uh, it has an MSI motherboard in it. That, I had no issues at all, literally. I built it, I hit the power button, it booted up, went to BIOS, and I told it what to boot from. It went straight to Windows, no issues. Um, once I got into Windows, I ran updates. I was able to find multiple drives and all that. I obviously didn't upgrade it from there. I went to the MSI website, found the motherboard, downloaded the drivers and utilities and all that from there. But I literally compared <laughs> what Windows Update had and what the website had, and they were exactly the same. Uh, with dark tire nits, I had issues. I don't know if it was because, you know, I'm using something that's new and it's not a tried and true thing with age to perfection. But anyways, yeah, dark tire nits gave me a headache. The MSI boards, I've never had an issue with. Aces, I don't know why I have issues with them. I watch other people and they don't have issues. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, confused on it. Mm -hmm. Out of all the cases, this one's definitely the, the strongest case. Um, I think your weakest parts are the glass, really. And the plastic little fake vents up here. But everything else, yeah, it's solid. This one... My weakest spot is going to be these really thin uh, rail covers for the fans. Uh, and that's on top too. These are the magnetic mat. Um, and the white build, it's about the, the same thing as this one for some reason. I don't know why, but very thin reason I was making this video as long as I can because I wanted this to get up to temperature wise obviously I don't want to have it hooked up to actually put it under stress to get it up wise so you guys can hear how loud it gets but and my mic's right here by the way it's as long as it ever gets I don't get it it's crazy First time I've ever done a computer like this. The wrapping, and it's actually sticking to what I thought it was gonna peel up. It actually stayed, so I'm very thankful on that one. Uh, and I just went back with a hobby knife and trimmed up the edges, and went back with the heat gun and around the edges and used my finger to kind of brush it down and push it into and shrink it and stretch it in areas and this is the only area right here where this nub is <laughs> I couldn't really get it to stay but it's it's staying though because I got this cage piece literally like I said that the graphics cards hooked up to the GPU right um, that bracket actually screws in with three screws right here to the tray that the motherboard's attached to. So like I said, pieces literally coming off of this. Uh, amazing. So great job Thermaltake, Aces. Uh, I didn't have a problem with this motherboard. So good job on that, obviously. It's a little older now because this is 2022 and we're what ddr5 now yeah windows 11 um yeah <laughs> so much stuff has changed prices of uh graphics cards or what was a 30 80 30 90 something like that right what the retail value is, is what a 16, uh, 1660 goes for. I believe that's what it is. 
Yeah, it's just crazy. Stuff's way, way too high. But that's what happens when you have inflation and the prices of everything go up. And then, oh yeah, I got a raise. No, you, you got raised because everything's going up. See, pretty good at uh, taking care of my needs and then saving for my wants. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that was the best experience I've had with building a computer. This one is definitely teaching me some things. The all white build, that one went so easy that I was shocked. I was not expecting that. Um, cell phone wise, we're not using the iPhone anymore. We're using the Samsung Galaxy S21 plus 5G. So that's where we are on that. I'm using it as a, uh, yeah, to monitor my Sony video camera over there. So that's how I'm doing that. And. Oh yeah, and I got a desk, new boom arm. We're still using the Yeti mic. I did pick me up a stream deck. It is the 15 key one. Still rocking the same mouse. Um, mother, 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 mother. Let's see, the keyboard's different. I'm using a tough gaming keyboard. I think it's the, the steel series because it is aluminum. Uh, the Asus monitor is a <laughs> collector item now. Very hard to find. In fact, uh, been trying to keep eye on that and all that stuff, and I can't find any actually. Uh, maybe some just need to know where to look, but for the most part, everything I've been finding that is this Gundam Wing, um, right? Yeah, I believe it's the Gundam Wing thing. It's actually in Japan. Uh, pretty cool story how that one goes, but yeah. And then hopefully in the next video, I have this all fixed and my little lighting better. <laughs> Uh, that's always one thing I've always pushed myself for is better lighting in my videos. I noticed that when I first started, I just had the ceiling light on and thought that was good. No, actually I found out that the more blinding light you can throw at yourself, the, the better you show up on camera. Unless you have a very fancy DSLR camera with you know wide angle lens or whatever. But yeah, with how I've been doing my videos, this Sony camera was a uh, FX33, I believe it is. Actually, I did a, a video on that one. Anyways, uh, does shoot 4K. My audio has been a really, really nice with this Rode microphone. Um, just speaking about my recording stuff so you guys can see just how humble I am but my videos I feel like have been a lot better in detail I'm not pushing it out in 4k on YouTube I'm actually bumping it down to 1080 but because I'm shooting in 4k bringing it down to 1080 my image seems a lot more sharper than that Oh, the Samsung camcorder I used, and the, I believe it was the, another Sony camera that I was using. But anyways, <laughs> no, it was a Canon, that's right, I was using a Canon camcorder. And to me, it just makes more sense to use a camcorder than a camera. I have a nice camera over there intimidating because it's so far beyond me and how advanced it is. It's more advanced than the cameras I used when I worked in Colorado at 
tourist attraction. That's how crazy that camera is. So Nikon, congratulations on making one hell of a camera that uh, even the, the user manual even confuses me. <laughs> so that's a learning curve on my part. Computers have been a little bit of a learning curve. We're not. The fans don't even feel like they're blowing out hot air, so. And power supply is still off. Really? There is no like test button back here either, so. And obviously the power supply is working. I don't I don't get that one. That's the only thing that no matter what. I've what, had this running for like a whole month, several months now actually, and that power supply has never spit the fan on. But then again, Dark Tyrant, it's never kicked its fan on either, but there was a button I could press and it would power and spin up. Actually, does this one have one? I don't think this one has one. Nope, this one does not. This one's a 850. GQ, I think that one is a 850. I don't think that one's a GQ though. Actually, yeah, I can't really tell because the trace in the way for me reading the side panel of it and I wrap that front side. Ah, oh, man. But I'm sorry about the, you know, making videos stopped and now I throw out one or two great blue moon right anyways like I said I'm trying to get on my feet and it seems to be kind of hard to do mentally and physically um, odd thing and no I have not gotten the COVID thing so uh, knock on wood well cardboard is kind of like a wood because it's made from that but anyways <laughs> So it wasn't COVID that got me, it's just, I don't know, my joints have been really sore lately, I'm trying to find motivation, it's kind of hard because mentally, you know, everything that I had is gone, and trying, trying to do right still, is, that's hard. Especially when you lose, you don't know how much you'll love something until you lose it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much what I'm saying. But, obviously, hopefully, you know, doing a good deed will bring a good deed to me. It's, you know, the karma thing. But anyways, just want to say thank you guys for, you know, the ones that have been subscribed it means a lot to me. And, uh, I don't know, like I said, I'm always checking my YouTube channel to answer questions and help you guys out. Uh, I had a guy ask me about monitors. I told him about, you know, and I, I answered back. Um, another guy asked me about what was it, uh, CPUs, motherboards, and graphics cards, and you know, on the parts of the computer. Um, some of you guys, you know, have actually maybe made me feel better because you know, I'm putting this video out, don't see much views, and then several months later, I'm getting reviews, and you know, and people are like, great job on the video, or a thumbs up, and you know, that. That means a lot to me. It really does. I'm not some big tech channel, I'm not a big review channel, I'm not a you know good at b rolling and throwing stuff together. I kinda like the nitty gritty. I don't have any other things going on. I do have little social media accounts, but it's mostly for trying to communicate with people so I'm not, you know, 